Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. This evening's Mass is the votive Mass of the Immaculate Heart of Mary from the 22nd of August, with the commemoration of today's saint, the Pope and martyr St. Anacletus, the last of the Popes personally ordained by St. Peter, and the third collect of the Holy Ghost. One of the saints says that the Holy Ghost was the dowry given by God for the espousal of the Blessed Virgin. Very often on the 13th of the month, in preparation for our Fatima Rosary procession, I like to read over the events or the words of Our Lady from each apparition at Fatima. Today's offered me, in connection with my divine office, a wonderful meditation on hell and heaven, a same meditation which is afforded us by the devout recitation of our rosary. Remember that Our Lady, Sister Lucy says, opened her hands, and the rays of light seemed to penetrate the earth, and the children saw, as it were, a sea of fire. Plunged in this fire were demons and souls in human form, like a transparent uh, burning ember, all blackened and burnished bronze, floating around in that conflagration, now raised into the air, by the flames that issued from within themselves, together with great clouds of smoke, now falling back on every side like sparks in huge fire, without weight or equilibrium, amid shrieks and groans of pain and despair, which horrified us and made us tremble with fear. The demons could be distinguished by their terrifying and repellent likeness to frightful and unknown animals, black and transparent like burning coal. And having read this and thought about a a bit this morning, I turn to recite my divine office, the old office for today's saint. He is unfortunately one of the many saints who is abolished by the missile of the so-called blessed John the 23rd. He is not very blessed, and we certainly do not use that missile here. But in the old divine office, there happens to be from St. Gregory this morning a beautiful sermon on offer about the joys of heaven. And I thought, what a complete, what a complete instruction. Dearly beloved, if we consider what and how great things are promised unto us in heaven, all things which are upon earth grow poor to our mind. This present life being compared to life eternal ought rather to be called death than life. For what is daily the daily failing of our corruption, but as it were, a creeping death? But what tongue is there that can tell, or what understanding comprehend, how great is the rejoicing in the city above, where they have part with the choirs of angels, where they stand with the most blessed spirit before the glory of the Creator, where they see the face of God present, where they behold the incomprehensible light, where they have no fear of death, and where they rejoice eternally incorruptible. When we hear these things, our hearts burn within us, and We long to be already there, where we hope to rejoice forever. But we cannot attain unto great rewards, save through great labors. The greatness of the reward doth delight our mind. Let not the throes of the struggle dishearten us. If only we would make a meditation like this on a regular basis to consider the joys of heaven and the terrors of hell. Surely we would be encouraged to do good and then to offer sacrifices for others so they too could avoid hell and so that they too along with us could rejoice in heaven. 
It was certainly for this very reason why our Blessed Lady came to earth. Our Blessed Mother tells us that she is sent to this earth with devotion, to promote devotion to her heart by the express will of God so that souls may be spared from going to hell. If you meditate on the mysteries of the rosary, the whole of the faith is always coming alive for you. When you do the sorrowful mysteries, especially the agony in the garden and the crucifixion, consider that our Lord was in some mysterious way allowed to suffer the very agonies of hell during those hours of his passion. And our Blessed Lady and St. Joseph in some mysterious way anticipated the separation and the pain of loss of hell during the three days of the loss of the child Jesus in the temple. And then we consider the ascension or the assumption, the joys of heaven that await us. But most people don't so much fear hell or look forward to heaven as lose themselves in this light. On everybody's lips now is all the business still, years later of 9-11. Do you remember, you probably don't even, I had a hard time remembering the code word, do you remember all of the to-do in 1999 about how the world would come to an end and everything would be finished at the turn of the century? And then nothing happened at all. Y2K, I think it was called. People worry about those things. One time, one of today's saints, Francis Solana, a great Franciscan missionary in South America, preached to the very sinful people of Lima, Peru, comparing the destruction of a city with the destruction of a soul, or a whole group of souls going down into hell. Now the people, knowing that he was a prophet and could predict the future, misunderstood his words. Sometimes people do misunderstand a sermon. And they thought he was predicting the end of their city. And they got all excited and exercised. And there was a, oh, oh, a whole-scale panic. Until finally it was brought to the attention of the bishop who was a saint, Toribio of Mongrovejo, and he gave orders to the saint to go back to the pulpit and clear up the matter so that calm, some measure of calm, could return to the city. People would worry about a momentary destruction of life or property or limb, but eternity, those are just words from a preacher, but not if you meditate the eternal truth. That is why the rosary is so absolutely crucial for us. Nevertheless, when it comes to considering heaven and hell, I love very much the prayer of the Saint Francis Xavier, in which the Saint tells our Lord that he does not love him so much because he hopes to get to heaven, nor because those who love thee not must burn eternally. Why does he love our Lord? The Saint says, Thou, my Jesus, didst me upon the cross embrace. For me didst bear the nails and spear and manifold disgrace. Then why, O blessed Jesus Christ, should I not love thee well? Not for the hope of winning heaven, nor of escaping hell. Not with the hope of gaining aught, nor seeking a reward. But as thyself hast loved me, O everlasting Lord. If that seems awfully altruistic or high for you on the spiritual ladder, don't worry. Continue with the love for the rosary, the holy mass, the sacrament. And Our Lady, who has come to this earth specifically for this purpose, Our Lady will make your soul on fire like hers with the love of God, so that the only thing that matters is God. I conclude with a little story I came across recently in that wonderful book of uh, spiritual reading, uh, The Virtue of the Month. It is a story about uh, a novice in a monastery. And he was a most virtuous young man and very holy and serious. And the devil was jealous of him, envious. So the devil appeared to his novice master, his teacher, 
and he disguised himself, the devil did, as an angel of light. And he said, too bad about that student of yours. He's damned, you know. He's going to hell. And the novice master took it as coming from God, and whenever he saw that poor young monk, he would break into tears at the thought of such a good young man. And the angel said, he's going to go to hell. Finally, one day the novice asked his master, Father, he said, why do you weep when you see me? And he explained what the angel had told him. And the young man gave an extraordinary answer. He said, Father, I, I don't do what I do for fear of hell or for love of heaven. If our Lord wants to send me to hell, may his holy will be done. I do it because I love our Lord. May his will be done. That night, the, the young, the novice master had another dream. And this time, an angel really did come to him. And he told him that the first dream was false, but this was true. That those words on the lips of that young man were so very, very pleasing to Almighty God. However, to attain such a pure love of God that the only thing we really want to do is his will. Love Our Lady, stay close to her, meditate the rosary with her each day. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven will not just be words, it will be all of the strength of your heart. How to save souls and ourselves in first order from hell? Remember, to whoever embraces this devotion to my immaculate heart, I promise salvation. These souls shall be dear to God as flowers placed by me, Mary says, to adorn his throne. If that second step seems too high for us, let's at least aim for the first step, heaven, and take some other souls with us as flowers to adorn the throne of God. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.